Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, Suhani. I think that was such a mood booster. Uh, hi, everyone. Good evening. How are we doing? I see some uh, messages on the chat. Thanks for responding, Shilpi. Ashia, of course. And I think a few uh, other participants are just joining in. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And we are very exciting, uh, excited for a conversation between uh, Pratibha from Involve and Savtar, who's also joined us for a conversation on student agency. Just to kind of get us warmed up, I would want to uh, just pose a question to you all and see what's coming up in the chat. What do we understand about student agency? What are your personal views? Uh, if there's a one word answer that's coming up, if there is an example that's coming up, let us see some responses on the chat. What does student agency mean? What do you think uh, it, it really looks like? Okay, creating opportunities, student-led initiative, student leadership. Very interesting. Thanks for that, Padmini. Student-driven learning. Okay. How about a few more? Okay. If you have questions and if you are scratching your head, I think you're in the right place because we are going to answer what it will look like and what it could look like. Uh, so again, thank you so much for joining at The Circle. What we are trying to do is trying to create a network of schools and after schools across India that are reinventing learning uh, and creating opportunities for children. And hopefully we want to, whatever we do, we want to do it for children from low income communities. So that is the work that we are in. We have an incubation, which is a two year program for people who want to start their own schools and after schools. But we also have conversations and other short term programs at the Circle Labs where we, we want to bring uh, deep hard-hitting questions around what does it mean to reimagine a future of schools in India uh, for children who come from low-income communities. To that end, today we have a very interesting topic, which is thinking about student agency, thinking about what does it mean to define it, what does it mean to look at it in action, and how can we, is there even a possibility to uh, implement student agency at scale on a system level? For that, we have Pratibha Narayanan with us, who's from Involve. Involve is a very exciting organization. For the past nine years, they've been um, working on reimagining schools in classrooms from the point of view of student agency. What would it mean to have students as equal co-creators in the process of learning? They've been trying a bunch of cool frameworks and tools that they'll talk about. And we have Savdar here with us. Savdar is a filmmaker, educator, and a circle partner. He uh, he was part of the first ever incubation cohort at the circle and uh, is just doing some very exciting things around filmmaking and making sure that students are the storytellers and uh, voices of their own stories. He's worked on movies. He's created movies like Ready, Steady, and Chippa, all very exciting things that Savdar and Pratibha will shed more light uh, on today. So over to you both. Uh, just a few things on how the session today will go on. We'll uh, hear from Savdar and Pratibha, just their ideas on student agency, see some examples, see what Involve is doing uh, across the country. And we'll open up for conversations around the 6.40 p.m. mark. So if there are any questions, sparks coming up, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll have a dedicated space for that towards the end. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for joining Pratibha and Saptar and we're very excited to uh, have you. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. Uh, super exciting to actually see uh, many, many people uh, on this call on a, on a weekday evening. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Pratibha and I just had a had a chat uh, a couple of days ago and it was quite exciting to think about you know what what student agency can mean and and that i think from the get go for me the idea you know 
was that if anybody has ever spent any time inside the classroom one just knows that students taking ownership of their learning is success you know it's 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 the beginning of what we know is going to be uh, you know is is going to be a journey of learning for the students um so first i would love to get uh, you know pratibha in this is something that uh, uh, that has become the hallmark of what 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 you are doing i'm so excited that that you know we're doing this in so many different ways i was also super uh, happy to hear just the scale with which involve is looking at student agency and, and looking at it across the across the spectrum also um on this call we have saksham who is a student of mine who was one of the co-creators of this film that we made called ready study um he yeah and he now studies at at flame uh university and is a uh, is a stand up comedian in the making um uh, is saksham here or no? i i never know if saksham is like joined or not joined saksham is here so maybe saksham can just say hi to everybody and uh, we we'll put uh, you hi everyone okay. saksham the side uh to you know here for you so excited to meet you about uh, about what uh, you know what student agency looks like from the other side of the classroom but first maybe pratibha pratibha what do we mean by student agency there like it, it sounds like yeah. something really uh, you know really heavy and really complicated but but you know just to sort of get us off and, and get us on the same page Yeah thank you thank you so much for having me and I'm so excited to see so many people some familiar faces some new faces uh, on this call today very excited and um, super excited that Saksham is joining us because I think that perspective is more important than anything I could ever say on this panel uh, but I think at Involve uh, and the work that we have been doing for many years we also arrived at this quite recently it was in something that we knew earlier on uh, but the idea was uh so if we are, if i am to simplify student agency it essentially comes down to three things for me right it's the ability for a child to dream design and do uh it's the ability of a child to dream of whatever they want to create their lives uh, which means it requires to require them to have awareness exposure uh, ability to see different types of opportunities that they may not have access to in their immediate lives so just expanding their scope of dreams is the first part of agency the second part of agency for me is about being able to design towards those dreams so how do you actually set pathways towards achieving dreams that you're seeing how do you set goals for yourself how do you act how do you create opportunities or find opportunities or sort of create those possibilities that can get you closer to your dreams and the third part is just doing um which is how do you take ownership of acting on this design that you create how do you show up every day and even in the face of challenge or failure how resilient are you to stay on that path um to really achieving those dreams so for me agency is just for every child in the country can i unlock this without constraints can i unlock this without um social financial barriers being the constraints to limiting some of these things and all of this while still recognizing that these are constraints that i can't take those away those barriers exist and those social norms exist but at the same time can i build skills can i build um my mindsets in students to be able to really overcome those barriers to be able to sidestep those barriers at points and to find enablers that may help them do that so that's the crux of what student agency might mean to me wow so cool what in your mind is the is when you speak about constraints like in the work that you sort of done and seen across the spectrum what's like the the big constraint you know like the one big thing that you think is is the barrier we need to cross and student agency is on the horizon on the other side i think uh, for student agency it's really a mindset barrier that both the child and and the ecosystem around the child need to cross over right we are such a system built on compliance on the need to obey on the need to 
uh, seek instruction or to seek knowledge from someone who is older than us, who is wiser than us, perhaps, uh, that we don't really look at knowledge acquisition or acquisition of learning, for that matter, from sources outside of that templatized adult source. So I think one barrier is just both children and adults changing that belief that learning can only happen in a very linear function of older to younger. Um, and I think the second piece is that there is a true partnership in construction of learning. It is not just something that one person is supposed to impart and the other person is supposed to receive, but that adults and children can actually meaningfully partner um, towards not just creation of learning, but also towards decision making, towards solving problems, towards um, creating spaces for themselves that work for both of them. So um, all of this are, are just ways to reimagine and rethink the way you would operate in a classroom or the way you would show up in a classroom, I think. Um, while all of the social um, financial barriers do exist and they, they do, I'm not saying that they don't hinder agency, 100% they do. Um, but how do we, while living with those barriers, those are barriers that are going to take a while to remove. And while still living with those barriers, can we unlock agency? Can we still create those? And that will require some of these fundamental mindset shifts, I think. Always comes around to mindset. Always comes down. You know, it's very interesting for me as a creative practitioner, as a filmmaker, one of the big sort of, I would say like watershed moments was, was, was a couple of years ago when, you know, when, it, it was during Ready Steady, we'll get Saksham to like chime in on this just because you also said co-creation and, and I remember us arriving at this, you know, having just this like chat about what does discipline mean, right? And the idea that we often, like discipline gets a bad name because we often confuse discipline with obedience and that discipline is actually on the other end of the spectrum if you were to draw a line between obedience, which is listening to what is being told and acting in a manner in which you are supposed to be acting, you move from there to not being obedient. Then you move from there to, you know, perhaps, you know, doing, starting to think about what it is that you want to do. And discipline is the other end of the spectrum where you're doing, you know, what, where, where you have ownership and you have agency over what you're doing and, and not, not necessarily what you're listening to. And I think that's a, that's a really nice uh, sort of illustration to draw, you know, even to be able to say that. I think discipline is very internal. Obedience is very externally enforced. And yeah. that's why they play on two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, Saksham, I want to get you into the conversation because obviously this conversation... Uh, should be uh, should be led by a student. Um, firstly, I want you know just for you to speak a little bit about what uh, you know what ready study was like. That you know just mentioned about you know uh, spaces where some sort of co creation, some sort of shared uh, ownership over over a project or over work that we're doing. And you know just I know that I know that it's also been a while. We worked on a film and I think we worked you know very intensely very closely about a couple of years ago and we've kept in touch since and Saksham has moved on at that time he was an 11th grade student now he's a, a college student studying at Flame um, and yeah and so now actually it's a nice uh, nice spot because it can also just be a you know a little bit of perspective over you know what what that project looked like or you know what 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 is agency to you what is co-creating to you uh, I was just like to start by saying it's it's been more than a couple of years. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, but it still has the same impact. Whenever I hear the word daddy study, it like just this clicks my mind about um when like ten writers, ten teenagers came together to write like five different stories, and everybody had a chance to uh, showcase it on the screen where everyone was, you know, every every everybody's story was supporting each other's. And like every story had a meaning behind it. Every story had experiences attached to it. So it was like basically 
everybody except the main crew um were unprofessional were, were the first timers in the field of filmmaking of filming uh and i think sabda bhaiya was like very kind of annoyed <laughs> because of <laughs> because of lack of discipline obviously who does not like big cameras um uh so i think learning from each other's experiences learning learning about each other because almost everybody came from different backgrounds and learning from what they have learned from their parents to teaching them what we have learned from our parents so it's like different spectrums i would say again because as you uh, stated discipline is more internal and uh, um obeying and all it's it's more external you learn it from somewhere it's it's usually influenced and i think we influence each other pretty well we all of us are doing pretty good in life right now um i think what else you want me to answer no i think so far so good thanks so much it's always dangerous to get saksham into a call because i don't know at what point of time he will be like you know he will crack some sort of a joke where, uh, <laughs> where like i remember the first screening we ever did of ready steady i was very proud to you know uh take these kids and of course they had sort of like decided amongst themselves that this is the chance to to get back and so then saksham comes on stage and somebody asks him a question he turns around looks at me and says bhaiya pehle bataiye sach bolna hai ki jhoot bolna hai i looked around and i'm like i love it i love aaj me aaj abhi i've been i'll become a better man aur aaj bahut sare log hain call pe to i'm a changed man i'm a changed man okay amazing um i think that's it's it's yeah it's cool to see uh spaces you know outside of the classroom where a lot of uh, co learning happens i think i think for me even in the process of 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 ready study or even now when we sort of run programs on ground with lighthouse where we going into after school spaces where kids come together um with storytelling it sort of lends itself very naturally for us to be able to say hey but we are really interested in what you have to say right because that's what it's that's the aim the aim of the objective of this lesson is not that you will get to learn uh, get to know how to you know multiply two three digit numbers the aim and the objective of this lesson is that you will be able to tell your own story effectively so there you know we're very aligned to the idea that that uh, everything is essentially about what is it that you have to say and how can we sort of uh, how can we get there i'm thinking more in terms of you know uh perhaps prativa a little bit of you know examples of what you could see inside classrooms or things like stories yeah. that maybe stuck like stayed with you and and where we can you know where where we saw it and we were like okay this this is what student agency looks like and this is why we need it so badly yeah yeah i think that was where we also were when we started out we were also like okay let's do something after school let's do something um you know outside of the traditional spaces because those spaces don't are not lending themselves to agency usually because of the kind of structure that we have set up in our classrooms but we also realized very quickly that because that was the case anything around student participation in agency was always starting to be seen as something that's extra वो आप बाहर जाके करो यहाँ नहीं करो उस चीज को काइंड ऑफ थिंग राइट सो देन वी स्टार्टेड थिंकिंग हाउ डू वी ब्रिंग इट विद इन द क्लासरूम हाउ डू वी ब्रिंग इट टू करिकुलम हाउ डू वी ब्रिंग इट टू प्रोग्राम्स दैट एग्जिस्ट विद इन क्लास रूम्स दैट स्टूडेंट्स हैव टू गो थ्रू एवरी डे डे इन एंड डे आउट फॉर एट सिक्स आवर्स अ डे रेट एंड दैट्स वेर वन ऑफ आर वेरी अर्ली प्रोग्राम्स दैट वी स्टार्टेड विच इज अ वेरी सिंपल प्रोग्राम इट्स कॉल्ड प्योर टीचिंग नॉट एन इन्वेंशन वी क्लेम टू मेक इट्स एग्जिस्टेड अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड फॉर एवर simple idea is that senior students come and support their junior learners in the teaching learning process right now what happens in this process is that you have some senior student or student who has a mastery over a certain concept who gets mapped to younger students and they together sit and learn that particular subject so it could be math it could be science it could be english for that matter and what 
transpires in the process is one, they realize that they can co-create learning learning among themselves. So children within themselves can create learning and not just revise learning, but create new learning. And a very, very beautiful example of this happened in one of our classrooms. So this is a, we did this in lower primary schools, right? Uh, in schools which were first to fifth standard. So just give me a second. Um, in the first to fifth standard um, schools, so we had a student leader who was in fifth grade. So this is a very tiny girl in one school in Karnataka, in rural Karnataka here. And she is a Kannada speaking student. And she was mapped to four learners who spoke no Kannada, who spoke only Hindi, because this is an area of Karnataka, which has a lot of migration. So there's a lot of multiple languages coming in. And this girl was mapped and they were supposed to learn the concept of big and small. Um, so objects, that's what they were doing in grade three at the time. And so this girl uh, was super confused because she was like, I don't know their language. I'm not sure what to do. And then she goes to one of the teachers and says, Ki, can you tell me what big and small is in Hindi? Just those two words. Right? And she learned that it's chota and bada. She learned and came back to her group. And then she started picking up random objects. So she would just pick up like a pencil and a notebook and go bada chota and she would just do like huge actions around those and she would make them guess what it was. And eventually the students started guessing, ki, okay, what she means is bada chota. So they started picking out the right things. She did this about five, six times. The eighth time, what she did was she intuitively just went dodda chikka, which is the Kannada words for bada and chota, right? And then she did that three, four times. And now these Hindi speaking students were suddenly going dodda chikka for everything. So they were seeing all big things and saying dodda, all small things and saying dodda chikka. These are grade three students, right? Very tiny. Now, what happened in this little moment, in this 10 minute of classroom, is something that the teacher would have taken at least two hours to do. And the reason simply being that for one teacher to address multi-level classrooms with language, with changes of student learning attitudes and everything is nearly impossible. But this child, because she's so much closer in age, she understands the challenge of learning that these kids will face. She knows why she found it difficult to learn Bada Chota. So she was able to apply her understanding of the problem to this situation and therefore say, okay, how do I teach this concept? Now, this simple idea and it's when you think about it when you look at it as an outsider it may not seem like such a big deal but the fact that this girl now had the confidence that I can actually teach someone something they don't know that itself is such an empowering thing right? and I think what, what Saksham also said that the way when each of them came together to make that movie the way they also sort of coached each other to get where they are today the way they were able to create that pure community to get where they are today led to each of them also finding their own strengths and weaknesses. Led to each of them also identifying what they can do much more. And that is truly unlocking agency. And if you create repeatedly such experiences within classrooms for children, they start to believe that they can. And you know, uh, what also um, beautifully written by Kiran Beer Sethi in her book is just getting children to say, I can. And the number of times you get them to say it in early childhood experiences, the more likely they are to continue to do that in life, right? So that's the, uh, that's one example of where we've been able to bring it within curriculum. And now what we do at Involve is to see ki, can we take any curriculum, whether that's STEM, whether that is math, whether that is literacy, numeracy, and can we look at it through this lens of agents? What will it take to retweak the delivery of the existing curriculum to empower the child to say, I can? What change will it take for the teacher, classroom, student, and everything? So that's the that's one example of what it might look like. I think it's such a great, uh, great take. No, I. This is what we were discussing on the last call as well. For me, it's such a foundational idea, and to sort of take that up, uh, you see it so much in in siblings also. Like right now, I I just I have I have two kids who have just started a new school, 
and it's really interesting because the older one is five and a half and she's in she's in kindergarten and the younger one is two and a half and she's just going to school and to just see them walk to school together right and have the younger one is just like learning to speak and obviously the one person in the world who understands her best is her sister and so no like the elder one noor has just sort of come into her own because she has realized that she has this superpower that she understands what the young one is trying to say and she can explain it to other people and the growth i am seeing in just her taking to new spaces is so phenomenal yeah because you're like that's it that she's just like figured out that now now we are a team yeah and, and exactly. now i can you know i can move things around i can explain to other people yeah uh, yeah i think that confidence that belief that ability to think that i may be able to do this um and if you just keep reinforcing that so much because i remember from my own early childhood experiences that was a huge part of my experience saying people around me kept saying yes you can do it and i yeah. started to constantly say a yes, second and so how do we create that within classrooms for all children is yeah. sort of and i think what saksham also said echoes that idea that they may not have come in with any film making experience or knowledge of how to make a great film yeah. but just the belief that they could do it was enough to champion that so cool okay i'll go to saksham for one more uh, anecdote and then maybe we can open it up uh, if we are closing closer to 6:30 no amina and and have if there are any questions yeah any questions. we have time so that's okay so okay i i can think of so many but i would love to you know have saksham speak about perhaps an anecdote an incident uh you know where you realized it could be ready study where it could be somewhere else also where you know you realize that you learned something from people around you or an experience that you sort of went through together that could have never been taught by a teacher this is like just something that would have never worked if it was you know if, if it was told to you can you please repeat again i'm saying if, if you can think of an anecdote or an incident or a story where uh, perhaps you know students like your teammates sort of you learned from each other something that could have never been taught by a teacher or like or, or in a you know or in an instructional manner i mean the whole filming process was a learning uh, experience in itself be it daily hacks life hacks or uh, life lessons of course um i can recall um, learning things from um, amit and, and the production team overall um uh, when like we had this uh, call time at 12 am delhi winter keep in mind okay can you can you explain what is production team and what is call time okay so production team is basically um people who manage uh, the the set the team which includes the creatives the set designing lighting uh, people who carry the camera maybe i don't know the executive producer producer um and call time is when uh, peop- everyone the the cast and crew are called on the set so if a call time is at 12 o'clock you need to be there at 12, 12 o'clock so uh, so that the set designing can happen and sometimes it's different for cast and crew differently because set design takes time and then cast comes we don't want to waste time of cast because they are doing something for us we don't want to upset them cool so, so production team is like the team that manages everything yeah. that's happening right the and the call time is essentially like on a film set very often you have different teams coming in at different times the day doesn't start at the same time for everybody so it's just the day time you're supposed to be ready and on call okay go for so, it so i learned so i saw this determination in everyone okay so keep in mind it's delhi winter it's like the temperature is in single digits 
and it's 12 am call time on a railway station where trains are still running and all of us are full of uh, adrenaline we like we need to go and we'll shoot we'll be there in front of cameras um and uh, the production head i don't i don't remember his position um gaurav bhaiya i think he was i don't know what he just became a nocturnal thing he did not sleep only he uh, la, la, on the last on the previous day uh, we packed up wrapped, wrapped up everything by 8:30 and then production had some work for the next uh, day's shoot a ka stuff props just that they had to buy so i was there with them because it was near my house only so i was like i'll join you guys so everything took time till i think it took them 9:45 ish to get everything and then 10 o'clock we were back home and 12 am to thai call time out of nowhere i had never imagined that i'll be able to pull off so many um uh, all nighters because i had my 11th finals going on uh but i surprisingly did and then i saw gaurav bhaiya coming from a distance all of us are like drained out of energy we like dekha jayega jaise hota hai aaj ka waise bhi kaun sa itna energy de pa rahe hain hum log because it's too tiring for all of us and out of random we see the the production people coming in with props and they like all charge of like come on guys let's do it like 12 baj rahe hain raat ke pura din soye nahi hai how are you so energized they like determination like and they when i when i talked to uh, gorav i was like bhai aap sote ho like your determination your smiles and your uh, happiness when you're on set everybody's happiness the teenagers the, the children basically make me want to work out of my comfort zone and he told me i like to sleep like at least 8 to 9 hours because i need, i want rest because production is a very heavy work i'm like it does but how, how do you not sleep it's like it's because i see you guys working hard so i'm like i don't want to be behind in that effort if everyone's giving 100% i also need to give in 100% and i was, I was like he's got a point if if every child every children was putting in a lot of effort were even even my friends we were when we were shooting in school a lot of our friends who had um, who had no dialogues as well who was like the, the background characters in the classroom who were there in the school and the we shot in my school um they were there in the school by 4 am because that's when the call time was and they had no dialogues but they were just happy to be there so it was a lot of um happiness all around tiredness all around but at the end of it it was all learning all around learning to be um helpful learning to be joyful learning to be helping and generous with with your efforts that you're giving in for others even even though you have no um in coming something that's coming back to you it's amazing though i love it it's so cool i really took me back to delhi winter the thing is that this idea right like now how do you represent this in data oh. is such a challenge to exactly. be able to say right like the idea that people knowing that somebody else is going to wake up and attend an early call time yeah and being pushed to do that and yeah. we saw it over a period of a month right yeah. like we saw the growth we saw the ownership that we were taking just when we just created that space to be able to say hey you know what call time is call time and i'm going to be there at 4 o'clock in the morning and so should you and so yeah. if i'm going to be there you should be there and 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 so then there's just this expectation that goes around to be able to say hey we you know we're all being accountable for uh, yeah each other know, for for you know, for 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 the spaces that we're holding and it's yeah. it's incredible the you know what started off as saying that this can't be true to it really functioning 
at a high intensity high efficiency where yeah. you're just looking at it and saying there's so much learning that's happening right yeah. here in front of our eyes you know it's it's quite incredible yeah and i think i mean this exact description that saksham so vividly created of what it could look like our imagination is can we create these across schools in india like what will it take to codify this yeah what will it take to uh, make something that will help teachers visualize this in their classrooms will help teachers see their classrooms and say hey this is missing and i want it yeah and that is kind of the aspiration saying how can i um codify the idea of agency and bring it to every teacher so that they are able to see it and champion it for their children um, and of course in the process for themselves uh, because teachers themselves in a lot of situations may not have that agency and how do you bring it to them first to the parents to the communities so that they can bring it to their children i think that is a very interesting question to yeah. think about yeah yeah it's so true it's so true. and it's so important you know this idea of like if everything else remaining constant yeah you know if if we were to infuse our classrooms with like one magic potion yeah and kind of like if there was a way that we could codify it and that's yeah. why the work that you're doing is actually like so important working you know work, yeah working across governments working with students inside classroom just the the amount of the expanse that yeah. that you cover with the you know with with a very actually like very pinpointed agenda like which is yeah. hey this is it if this is a key that moves yeah. then there's so much more that get gets unlocked and everything sort of multiplies uh, yeah. in such important ways i think it's it's something that you know really moves uh, in so many aspects in life Right? Yeah, so, like of course, being like learning happening inside a classroom is a great, uh, is a great example to bring bring in. But I yeah. think uh, even when we are speaking about policies that are being created, you know, across the board, like yeah. what does a voice on the table really look like? A voice on the table really looks like exactly. I mean, we talk about, and you know, the world is talking about user centric design and designing for your user, and so on and so forth, and. you know our largest user is not on any conversation um our largest stakeholder of education is not on the tables of discussion and that is just that just seems like a disservice to to launching one of the biggest products in the country you know this is so interesting i i remember writing a short story about this 10 years ago about saying how act Actually, if you come to think about it, possibly the biggest sort of underrepresented community in the world, with like respect to having a seat on the table as far as like decision making is concerned, yeah, are just children. And yeah. saying that you know make up such a significant population of the world. Yeah. Where your timetable, what you should be eating, what you should be studying, what it's you should well, be doing yeah. with your time, they have no say on the table in any of this. And that's yeah. so ridiculous, actually. exactly and that is all decided by people who are so far removed from them um and in fact even far removed from the teacher who is working with them and that's even you know for, okay forget students how many teachers do we have in these conversations right so there is just a huge gap of user centricity in education right now and how do we reform that and that's where we are saying okay at a school level can we do that can yeah. we get student bodies activated at a school level can we get students to participate more actively in sdmcs or in just parent teacher meetings um can we get them to have more of a say in those spaces and therefore be able to truly own those spaces so i think that and that's where the whole mindset of people and communities and parents and teachers and adults like us come in saying hey they are partners they have something to say and we need to listen to them yeah you know even in the media space now with a lot of the work that we've been doing we encounter social media a lot yeah and so one of the things that we've sort of realized just working with with teenagers and working in the sort of storytelling space is to be able to say 
the amount of time that teenagers are spending on social media and the role that social media has in their lives is yeah. so important and it's 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 actually incredible like if one looks at data the amount of like daily hours that it, the average teenager in india who has access to a smartphone spends 5 to 8 hours a day on social media and this is across socio economic background this is across geographical divide it's quite insane and the global numbers are actually like very similar probably even worse and so then we sort of came back to the table saying that hey you know what it doesn't help for us to come to this question saying you know casting judgment on social media what we Correct. need to do is to have this conversation and say but what are you doing on social Right? Exactly. Let's begin where with where you're at, and let's exactly. give it a certain amount of importance because otherwise, we're the problem. <laughs> we're being irrelevant, right? Like yeah. we're, at best, we're being irrelevant. At worst, we are the issue. Correct. Correct. I mean, telling children this is a bad thing versus this is a good thing is a very easy generationally passed down belief to kind of say ki are hamare zamane mein ye nahi hota tha you also should not do it but world has changed times have changed what are they doing on social media maybe they're actually doing something useful and maybe they're actually learning a lot more than they're learning in our classrooms through what they're doing there and Absolutely. what would it take for us to uh, bring some of those elements into our classrooms if addictiveness or gamification or that adrenaline that social media or the dopamine hit that social media provides is what is hooking children why are those elements not existing in our classrooms to keep them hooked to learning yeah and that's those are some of the questions that we can only answer if students talk to us and if we listen okay i am just looking at the uh, very happening chat window with lots of writing lots of things okay saksham i have an interesting question for you one is that Okay, you have already answered in the chat box. My, I was answering the last question. Oh, with it, was... I'm loving it. As looking at the question, Saksham has given with that. What has enabled you to take up student agency? Another question is that where they, I think there is a lot of sort of like you know thought about adults not feeling comfortable and handing over the reins to a student because as a society, you know, the mindset that needs to be worked upon. Um, what do you think about that saksham do you think if if you were to teach and i'm sure that you've actually taught uh i'm sure in like so, small groups and 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 uh, you know like what one is what has enabled you to take take up student agency maybe that's something that you can answer but also if you know you were to speak to adults who are basically saying that hey but we don't know like what you will do with your agency how would you answer that question that's a very very heavy question put on my young shoulders right <laughs> <laughs> um i would just Great if you want to give advice and say acha boss this is what you guys are getting wrong you know no, no, i have no advice i'm just thinking how can i answer the question because I'm just trying to comprehend what you just said. कोई बात नहीं. I'm just trying to think right now. Wait. Can you get break the question down in easier words for me? Okay. I'm going to try and break the question down. So <laughs> there is a. Well, maybe it is an unfair question. Uh, there. So one fear. Say, if I was to like, I think there is an understanding in the room. Ki, a teacher decides classroom mein kya hone wala hai and students should have a say in it, right to be able to say hey you know what maybe i should also have a say in deciding ki kya padhna chahiye kya nahi padhna chahiye din mein kya karna chahiye kya nahi karna chahiye right like the a sentiment would be that should like do you think that teachers losing this power like is there a is there a fear for losing power that would happen in a situation like this and why do you think it's important like why should kids have a say in in you know in their own learning why should kids never say have a say have a say yeah i think every kid should have a say in a classroom because 
um it's not just the teacher teaching but it's the children learning as well so wow <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> but it's like um agar main aapko kuch bata raha hu aapko sunna hi nahi hai to fayda hai kya bolne ka if it's like if sardar bhai didn't want to make ready steady will there be a ready steady there would have been a ready steady but not just ready steady must have been a different name a different storyline probably different plot in itself or probably different character development for people in real life as well so i think every child should have a say this i, I don't think there should be a fear of loss of position of power in a classroom because if the children are learning it's the teacher who's learning as well because the te- yeah, yeah. because the teacher um is obviously older than the the students in the classroom but the the teacher has been born and brought up in a different classroom setting and they might be teaching in what they have been taught but are they really teaching in what the children want to be taught in um i think you can also uh uh think or speak about that because you've been a teacher in teacher india you handled the classroom you know, um children want to be handled like uh because everybody every children child child needs their own space after all i w- i don't want to study maths but someone might so it's your choice you you want to you can or you don't like something you can give feedbacks to the teacher everything should be open for feedbacks i think even the students ptm to hota hai parent teacher meeting for students but also it's all about stm ka hota hai exactly student teacher meeting hota hi nahi hai i love so, how you I started think... this off with saying that these are like two uh you like heavy questions for sure yeah. pending it back <laughs> it was like one punch line after the other <laughs> that exactly how i said i'm I, i'm a changed man i'm a, I'm a grown man <laughs> <laughs> um exactly i would say uh every child has their own learning capacity every teacher has their own teaching capacity as well so it's like i am trying to speak but do the other uh, 58 people want to listen might be probably <laughs> 20 of them are listening 20 of them are not or happens so you need to be always open for feedback and you should not have a fear for fear of loss of power because if you have a if you have a fear of loss of power that means you don't have power at all you're just scared of teaching some hard hitting <laughs> if i had something as a student in my classroom i would be very scared attack 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 <laughs> what's it maza aa gaya i love it thank you so much saksham <laughs> i do want to uh, bring on bedehi who's been uh, on the chat and she's talking a lot about you know the kind of pressures and maybe a lack of agency that teachers even have right and maybe that's a different perspective that we can kind of discuss whether you do want to come off of mute and just elaborate your question or your comment hi hi everyone so i've just been listening so i am a teacher myself so i'm just telling you what the ground reality is that we are barely con- we are never consulted when it comes to curriculum design it's just a textbook that is given to you so i don't think it is loss of power i think the teacher is more often than not very scared what am i going to do if i don't complete this if i don't do it the way they want me to what's going to happen my job is at stake the parents are going to come and ask me questions and ultimately sometimes students also have problems with that so it's uh, that is the bigger uh, i thought that's just what i wanted to clarify i don't think it's that we don't want to give power given a choice every teacher would want to do you know would want to give this power to the students and get it because we have we've also been through the system we know how it works but uh, on 
on an everyday basis, we don't have that option. We are teaching 50, 60 kids. And what do we do? We, we can't, we don't really have the time. And then, then they want results. They want reports. And, you know, what is your progress? And uh, of late with schooling becoming more and more corporate, it is becoming even worse, I would say, because now that the metrics also come into the picture earlier, we had this, oh, this teacher was so good to me. We didn't really have that grade for that teacher. We said, wow, she changed my life with this word. And that was enough for me to go on with my life. You know, even at the, at 70 on my deathbed, I would be thinking, wow, that teacher said this word to me that day and it changed my life. But that is no longer there because we have removed that uh, system of evaluating, for example. So we are now going to measure in terms of how many students got how much marks. Then... That's the uh, that's what I just wanted to say. Thank you. No, thanks for that, Vedi. Thank I think very very uh, important perspective to have, and I actually wanted to kind of direct that to Pratibha and really ask about involves work on the ground is working with students, but also teachers and yeah. school authorities and governments. So what does that look like? And, you know, there are very real challenges that teachers and schools have on the ground. So what has it been like for you? And what are some ways to really navigate that? Yeah, I think great point, Vene. And thank you so much for calling that out, that um, student agency is not a, uh, is not seen in isolation. It is a factor of a teacher's agency, a parent's agency. And do they have access to change things? Do they have ability to control or like you said, the choice to do things the way they would want to? And unfortunately, um, I, I, and I think you um, are from a more private ecosystem, but we work with government ecosystems and we see the same challenges with government teachers, whether that's in rural Bihar or in urban Karnataka. We see them saying the same thing, that they're so tied by the compliance of the system that they just cannot uh, you know, exit beyond that to be able to really experience agency for themselves even. And what we have been trying to do uh, through the work that we do. So we work with government systems right from district to state to, you know, across the leadership in governments as well as at more of a teacher level. And the idea is, again, at each level, this is a shift in mindset in saying, okay, on what parameter are you going to start evaluating your teacher? Are you evaluating them simply based on how many students of theirs passed 10th grade? Or are you also evaluating them on other criteria? Are you also looking at their classrooms and seeing what type of students are coming out of their classrooms. Are there students making choices that are different from what the norm is? And are you looking for actively some of these things? And one of the very beautiful examples that recently happened, so in, in government schools in Bihar, in rural Bihar where we work, um, we had never seen any teacher mention that student confidence was something that she cared about. And even though they care about it was not actively something that they measured or anything because their block education officer or their HMs never cared about it, right? Um, we did a small program in one of the districts in Bihar. And at the end of that, we did a little evaluation. We did that with all of the stakeholders across the, um, across the chain. And what we saw was we didn't have any tangible results. Numeracy scores didn't change because, of course, they don't change in six months. Literacy scores didn't change because they don't change in six months. And then we went and asked the teacher, the block education officer and the HM and we said, Kya dekha apne? what changed? And they said, I'm just seeing these students so much more confident and I'm so happy about that. And this is a block education officer recognizing that there is something beyond numeracy and literacy. And this is a block education officer whose entire KPI is tied to reporting the FLN scores of his district, right? of, his, of his block, right? So how do we get them to see what is not there or get them to see the music beneath the words essentially and say, okay, what might there be that I'm not seeing and how can that directly have impact on student outcomes? So I think the second piece that we also try and focus on is how we connect some of these agency related outcomes to outcomes that they care about. And I think this is something that Sabdan and I was discussing is that we can't change systems just because I want them to change. Uh, systems change when they want to change. And so I have to figure out what the care of my systemic stakeholders is. 
what do they care about what is their loss in changing or what is their gain in changing and can i play to those gains and cares can i give them what they need and add my element to it so that they feel that mm -hmm. mera bhi kaam ho hai. so working with systems is a very very long term game it's almost like imagine you're steering the titanic right you can't see it move um, it's a really really slow and laborious process but when it does it's a huge it creates waves and that's what changing systems might look like so we do that bit by bit uh, but we also understand this we're in this lifetime we're probably just going to sow some seeds and walk away uh, yeah can you can you maybe shed a little bit more light on what you just said uh, around uh, playing to uh their needs or their wants can do you have any examples that can kind of uh, help us understand that better if uh, i don't know uh, if evaluation metrics is a way to answer that because there is a question on the chat there uh, yeah. but yeah and uh, to the audience uh, feel free to add more questions i'll also see if there's anything uh, that's left above that i can introduce yeah, yeah. I'll share a very small example of how uh, systems will trust you if you care about their care. Um, so when we worked in a district called Bhagalpur in Bihar, uh, we when we went there, of course, we, we have an offering, we have a program for your teaching, which we wanted to implement because we believe that that is a way to both achieve student learning outcomes, but also to unlock agency. But when we went there and we spoke to the diet, the training at the district level and the district education officer, they said that uh, we have said by the state that you have to launch a course in And the whole diet is now frustrated and they are worried about how to launch this course on Diksha. And they have to now create an entire course, create content around it, prepare everything and set that up. And they don't have the expertise and the skill in the department to do that. So they said, can you help us do this? We said, okay, we, our team sat down with them and created a, a Diksha course, which was called Khelo Bolo Sikho, which was, and we we played it 50-50. We said, okay, we'll design this course for you, but it's mein peer teaching ke kuch elements dalte hai, it's mein bacche aapas mein sikhe aise elements dalte hai, the course was around foundational literacy. And uh, we did this course where 80% of the work our team did, 20% of the work the department did. Right? Now this was because they needed it. They were like, okay, you do the course got launched. Over 5,000 teachers take up this course and complete this certification of how to use peer teaching or learning or collaborative pedagogies to improve uh, student speaking abilities. Uh, at the end of the quarter, when the results were declared, Bhagalpur becomes the top performing district in Bihar on launch of this course. Maximum number of teachers have taken the course. Quality of course is the highest. Suddenly, the Bhagalpur diet uh, principle is like, Oh, now we are top. Now we have to remain top. So the second quarter when they said we have to do another course, they are like, Ab, aap hume bas bata do kaise karna hota hai, hum kar lenge. And suddenly the dynamic shifted to 80-20. The district created resources, put together money, time, teachers, everything. And they said, Ab, hum course banayenge. The second time around, 9,000 teachers took the course. Right? And this established so much trust for us with the the system because we cared about what they care about and then they were like theek ab aapko jo bhi karna hai aap karo aapko peer teaching karwana hai here is your permission aapko ye karwana hai here is your permission and for them they may not care about my outcomes right now they may not care about student agency right now but that's fine why should i make them care about my care today once i start showing them outcomes they'll care about it but i need to do my work first so that's the uh, idea of how do we build true partnerships with people and I think everything comes down to everyone's a person at the end of the day it's all about building those relationships uh, and saying Ki, I care about you and this applies to adult student partnerships this applies to adult adult partnerships and saying Ki, I care about what you think I care about what you do and I'm here to help and how do we create change in the system by this is sort of what we're thinking Okay, that's a very powerful example, by the way. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I would, we are open for questions, by the way. Thank you for all the observations that everyone's putting on the chat. 
Sabdar, Vikas is asking as a filmmaker, when you are on the stage of developing a film, the idea of how a child from the age of group one, seven and above, um, how do you facilitate the idea of your film to relevant, uh, to be relevant from age groups that are so diverse, seven to 16? Oof, it's a very difficult question for uh, anybody to answer, which is that my uh, personal answer is that I don't, honestly, I, I care less about them being relevant to viewers and care a little bit more about them being relevant to the people who are making the film. Uh, and that I think that if, I mean, this is of course, if I'm making a film with kids. And so if, I think if authentic stories speak and if stories are authentic, uh, and the people who are telling them uh, have skin in the game and they're telling stories which are important to them uh, in a manner in which it has like, in which these stories have affected them. I think the, the stories travel across and very often uh, they travel across ages. You, you know, some of the best sort of children's films that you will see are films that, uh, that, that have done well and that have uh, um, affected people from all ages uh, and the other way around as well I mean, I'm a big believer in the fact that you know it's it's not necessary that if a film has uh, themes that are um, that are concerning adults uh, it is something that you know that children don't necessarily enjoy uh, it's it's a uh, you know the, this, this is something that I think uh, audiences and 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 relevance cuts across I think what what matters more is uh who is telling the story or where is the story located and are we being as authentic as possible to uh, to what the crux of the story is. To me, I care a little bit more in the development of that uh, than in how will it speak to people. Also, a uh, quick note, I have been messaged on the side that uh, Saksham's internet has fluctuated and he has taken this opportunity to uh, make a quick exit because uh, his football game is starting. So he says, thank you very much for people to listening. And he says, I hope I made some sense. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for letting us know. I was wondering where he went. Uh, I'm sure people would have loved to ask him questions, but that's okay. Uh, I see there's a comment by Nimisha, which I don't think is a question. But um, I'm trying to give it a quick read. Anyone who wants to come off of mute and ask a question to Pratibha and Sabdar, we have about, let's say, like six to eight minutes before we move towards closing. We can take two more questions. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, hi, Pratibha. Um, my question is... Um, it's actually derived from, you know, the statement that Vedani made and then later on the statement that I think Nimesha made about teachers feeling a lack of agency and uh, principals feeling a lack of agency. How might we be able to, because the, the work that you spoke about, very, very interesting, like, like you're speaking to those stakeholders. Any recommendations for how, might, how they might be able to start like making a change? Yeah. I think it's, it's really, a, it's a challenging one because it takes time. Because um, people are so used to a certain way of being and a certain way of operating that it takes time for people to restructure their thoughts. What we, uh, for example, with teachers when we work, something that we tell them is very simply asking more questions. Is we give them question frameworks to say how can you, instead of answering questions, how can you ask more questions? And even with stakeholders, how do we do that? Uh, the second piece, and this, this is something that we've done in our, uh, when we work at systems level, is to see that motivation and celebration actually plays a huge role in restoring agency of people. And when that comes through a chain of command, like in India, very honestly, you can't remove compliance. You can't remove chain of command that exists for a reason and that's there and that's part of the structure that we operate within. What we can do is infuse that chain of command with some sense of agency. And that we've realized, and this is something that we're also trying to study a little bit in detail, 
is what might be elements that will infuse that chain with some agency. And we found that motivation and celebration from within that chain. So let's say a HM really sending out regular motivational messages to their teachers saying, hey, I saw your classroom. What an amazing classroom. I loved it. Would love to come and see more. Um, or just creating some spaces for teachers, for HMs, for other stakeholders to feel championed. And this is something that we've also seen very frequently teachers talk about is that there is no recognition of the work that they do. They spend so much of their effort in classrooms, uh, teaching, explaining and figuring out way, different ways of learning for children, but that effort is not recognized a lot of times. And there is no one really seeing that. But how do we make that visible? How do we create those opportunities and make them intentional? There are chance that it happens sometimes, but how do we really make it intentional within the system? So what we are also trying to test within systems is what role uh, can some of these features like training and demonstration is one piece, but motivation and celebration, how can it really play out to restore the agency of people, to really make them feel championed and therefore more motivated? Um, and this is something what Saksham was talking about, right? Like if I know that someone else is going to show up at that 4 a.m. call time, I am a lot more motivated to show up because it's a shared ownership now. And so that is motivation. And that is share, creating a shared sense of purpose and motivation. So how do we do that with teachers and stakeholders? Another powerful thing, we talk about peer teaching and learning in students. We also say there must be peer teaching and learning among teachers. Um, PLCs are a great way for teachers to feel motivated, celebrated, championed, uh, and just heard a lot of times. So what these are some of the things that we are thinking. Uh, I wouldn't have any concrete uh, kind of answers yet. It's a long journey, but these are some of the thoughts that I have, I think. Uh, but would love to hear from the teachers in the group saying what would work uh, for you all in this chain of command to, to feel that sense of agency. Yeah, thank you for that. I think that's uh, just overall in any kind of work that requires co-creation or moving a program al uh, along we just forget that when people are together celebration is just a big part of moving things along and I love the nut for any teachers to kind of in the audience or any educators in the audience to kind of put in insights any last comments or questions that we want to take up even Savdar Pratibha anything that you want to add to the discussion that didn't come up uh, and you'd like to shed light on there is an in interesting bit that I do want Pratibha to talk about, which is the agency collective, uh, which is something very exciting that Involve is doing. Uh, and we will get to that if there are no questions or comments in the chat or anyone who wants to come off of mute. Can I is ask? Uh, yes. Sorry. I can't Hi, this is Vikas. Talking. Yes, Vikas. Hi. Go ahead. Uh, so my early question was directed towards Sabdar. Uh, in terms of the relevance and uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to understand. So I have been facilitating uh, with children uh, in a pretty experiential manner. And uh, in that experiential uh, bracket, I would add too many things where I've explored too many. Uh, so I work as a performer as well and I am a storyteller as well. And I've been professionally working only for children from 2013 until now. And somehow I accidentally got into it, but uh, I never knew that this was something uh, I wanted to really take up as a career, but I'm still continuing to do so. So uh, clearly with the discussion, uh, what we've been having. So if uh, a teacher or a facilitator has been exploring for all this while, very diverse kinds of content. And then when you want to like, just focus on one to be directed uh, to the children. So how do you do that then? Because uh, a maths teacher will teach maths, a science teacher will teach science, <laughs> and so on. With So there's a theme, and there is the idea of learning behind that theme. So uh, I'm at times like, you know, uh, a bit flabbergasted in terms of how that has to be directed. But I keep going with the flow until now. So to Savdar, to uh, Ms. Pratibha, what would you, uh, you know, because as a filmmaker, as someone who's been, you know, 
uh, and also uh, as a facilitator, what do you think, uh, you know, should the idea of direction be in order for any teacher for that matter? Say if they want to like, you know, uh, teach some something beyond what they're already doing and if they're exploring, you know, the other field. But clearly like how you have a direction towards, you know, uh, like creating a film. And that's again, a very passive way of, you know, uh, for children to consume. And I work with, you know, right from the age group of three till, you know, 16. And I've been seeing this and which is why uh, even today, uh, the relevance to create that content, I have to break down that into different age groups and then, you know, uh, kind of start doing that. So what would you guys, or uh, what do you think about it? If not tips or tricks, or what would you think about it? Just wanted to know. Firstly, thank you for doing what you do. You're doing the lot's work. Uh, if you, <laughs> as long as you've been working in storytelling for children, I'll tell you a quick fun anecdote, which is how mm -hmm. Ready Study started off. Uh, a bunch okay. of these students, Sakshan included, are students who a friend of mine called Nivriti, who I uh, taught uh, as a part of her Teach India Fellowship. These were kids who were in second grade and third grade when she taught them, and she mentored them over a period of time. When they were getting out of school, they were in 11th grade at that point in time, Nivriti thought that this was a great moment for her to do a project documenting the journey that these kids had sort of gone through because these are all kids who sort of, you know, went to elite schools but came mm -hmm. from low-income neighborhoods. And so she was like, let's get on this like this project where we can talk about the journey of, of the kids. And what she wanted to do was to write a book with kids. And so she said that, hey, you know what? We're going to do 10 chapters and these 12 kids and whoever wants to come in, come in and we'll start writing them. And they started that project. A month or two into the project, she realized that the kids were not being very enthusiastic about it. So she asked the kids and she said, listen, this book is going to be with you for the rest of your lives. This is amazing, but you don't seem to be into it. And they all sort of got together and turned around and told her, said, yes, but why don't you make a film? Which is when she took a step back and said, as heartbroken as I was, there's only one person I knew personally who makes films. And so she <laughs> called me and she said, listen, I have a bunch of kids. I want to write a book. It seems they're not interested in books. They want to make a film. Would you be interested in making a film? And I go back to this moment a lot because it tells me fundamentally what a great teacher Nivriti is and the step that yeah. she takes is to be able to first and foremost listen to where the kids are at. And I think if we can do that more and more, uh, then a lot of these questions of but what exactly to teach? Math teacher needs to teach math and a storytelling teacher teaches what? Uh, sort of, you know, it's it's a great place to start off with is, is, to, is, is to be able to listen to what the kids have to say. Like, like eventually I started, began only with storytelling because I could see like so many things right come under that. But then uh, as I was also exploring other mediums just for uh, children to consume content. So uh, I even made one uh, travel film as well for children, which uh, somehow, I don't know, accidentally got selected for a mountain film festival. And uh, that is where I got a lot of boost because the uh, person, Manender Kohli from that festival, uh, well, he said that, you know, like you should show this into the classroom. And I just made it uh, along with the flow because uh, I just wanted to create something for children, but I didn't know how uh, because I've never created one. And that was my first film. But uh, eventually then I, I don't know, somehow a lot of overthinking took place where in terms of doing so many things, it kind of becomes like a, sometimes a strength, but also it also turns into a curse sometimes because then you exactly don't know where to go. So yeah, I'm still finding, still searching, but uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for answering. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vikas and Sabdar. Pratibha, just last remarks from you and then we'll be close. And uh, everyone in the audience, please fill out the feedback form. That will be very helpful. Over to you. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I think we've, we've talked so much about student agency and what um, we are trying to do at Involve, but we realize that we are just no chance we can do this alone. Uh, we are trying to do something that is pretty uh, 
pretty radical uh, and we're trying to influence an entire system to do this and therefore it's going to take a lot of us to come together and make some noise about this and actually make it a larger part of the movement um, which is also why Involve has um, initiated a very small idea saying can we bring together practitioners, students, organizations who are working already and championing this cause of student agency and who have models that work, who have ideas that work. I already saw a few ideas being populated in the chat box, in the chat box already. So whatever um, exists in these little, um, you know, islands of excellence across the country, can we bring all of those together and can we create a more collective voice to champion this at a national level and say, let's start reimagining learning and education with this lens. And that is uh, an invitation we're making to people in the sector, people, educators, students, uh, organizations who are willing to kind of join us and create a larger narrative around this idea of student agency and be, uh, be just part of yeah, something larger and a movement that might might be interesting for all of us. Uh, we might fail at it. We are, we are very likely to fail at it and we are okay with that chance. Uh, but we, we do need more people to join us. So just to put that out there as well, we are still very initial stages of this idea. But if anyone would like to know more about it, feel free to just reach out to me. Um, I think you can connect with me on LinkedIn or any other platform. Uh, I'm sure we can share more details as well but would love to kind of have more people join in with this, particularly students and educators to help us frame this narrative better. Thank um, you for that. That's actually something, if you're interested in what Pratipa just mentioned, to be a part of um, a program or an agency collective that's actually uh, thinking about codifying the, all the conversations that we are having into a program and with better practices, you can mention that in the feedback form that I've sent. You can actually share interest. Um, to stay in touch with Pratibha and Sabdar, you have their LinkedIn. Um, if you are all open to sharing your email addresses, we can do that in a, in a, in a follow-up email as well. But I know we are a little over time, so we're going to close. And thank you so much, everyone, uh, for staying for this conversation, putting in your insights, challenging us wherever needed, and making this a very fruitful conversation. Uh, hope to see you all for more of these. Uh, have a great evening. Moreover, thank you so much, Sabdar and Pratibha. I think this was just so great. I loved the energy. And also Saksham, who's playing football somewhere. Uh, thank you all for taking the time and joining us. And this has been very, very exciting. And we'll continue to talk more about student agency in one way or another. Uh, thank you so much and have a great, lovely evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.